The key to a successful file migration is attention to detail, no matter what kind of tool you're using. Some tools obviously make it a little bit easier to keep track of those details, but if you're using a free tool, such as Robocopy, which is certainly a popular one for this type of a task, you're really going to have to make sure you get all of your command line parameters really nailed down. Now, here's a few that people tend to miss. Obviously, you want to copy subdirectories, but consider copying empty ones as well, not just the full ones. In other words, using slash e instead of slash s. And that's because that directory may still have some permissions on it, even if there are no files in it, and you're going to want to capture those permissions. You're always going to want to copy in restartable mode because you want to make sure that if, if things kind of go south on you, you have the ability to get this thing going again. You definitely want to copy with security. Uh, in fact, you can kind of pull in this copy all. That'll give you uh, the data, the security, it'll give you timestamps and everything else. Also, sec fix. Fix the security on the files, even on skipped files. That's important as well. If you are going to be doing a phased migration, where you're going to be migrating a bunch of files and then having to sync them back and forth, that's where this slash mirror switch comes in. You're almost never going to actually be moving files in a migration. You want to leave yourself the backup of having the original one still there. You can, of course, monitor the source, and this is where that synchronization comes in. So you're going to monitor that source and run the sync again or run the copy again after a certain number of times. Now, multi-threaded is going to be a big deal. Anytime you're, you're copying a bunch of files, getting more threads involved will help maximize the available network bandwidth and minimize the amount of time it's going to take this thing to run. The default for RoboCopy is 8, and the maximum is 128. So be very careful about sort of deciding how you want to build that threading. It's the machine that RoboCopy runs on that has to maintain those threads. So if it's got a pretty powerful processor and a good amount of memory, and in this case, most importantly, a lot of network bandwidth to the other computer, then you can do that. Then get into your file selection options, decide what you want to grab. That's pretty straightforward stuff, but also get down here to the retry stuff because you're definitely almost always on any file server going to run across some files that have to be skipped or retried simply because they're open or in use at the time and, and these options give you the ability to do that. You can typically just say look I retry a certain number of times and then fail and so forth and if there's going to be a failure you'd better have a log. Uh, the log is really important so that you can go through and, and verify that everything did copy and if something didn't then you'll have that list. Robocopy produces a a fairly substantial log, so it's going to take a little bit of effort to parse through that and, and find the bad news that you have to take care of, but it's something you have to do. So it is a little bit difficult to make sure you get all these things. You know, it's not unusual to see a, a RoboCopy command line that's so long you, it causes Carpal Tunnel to try and keep typing it, so you'll paste that into a batch file. Uh, the nice thing about a batch file, too, is that it lets you repeatedly tweak that syntax, so you can kind of try several trial migrations. Of course, there's tools that can make this a lot easier, dialog boxes and checkboxes and smarter migration options, but if you're after a free tool, RoboCopy is not an awful choice.